Today, I'll be sharing a little bit about the development and the rollout of our online CMEM database and how it has improved the performance and operations of our CMEM programs. So I'll be, com uh, I'll be going through um, and covering the rationale for why we, devel why we developed an online database, the various development the processes and the functionalities that we have, and then I'll be sharing a little bit about the results and outputs that we have generated through the online database between 2006 to 2013 data, and then some of the lessons learned and the future plans and additional features that we will be adding. So in 2006, CMAM um, began in World Vision, and we started implementing, and we were collecting most of our data using tally sheets on pen and paper, and then we would enter that information into an Excel database. And this whole process, I don't know if you have tried uh, writing tally sheets, filling out tally sheets, making the calculations using calculators. Even for nutrition advisors, I think it, it's a tedious process and it's very, very prone to human error. I know I tried and, and I made a lot of mistakes. So the whole process was very time consuming and it was prone to human error. And as we discussed yesterday with the whole um, short funding cycles of CMEM programs, a lot of our CMEM uh, project officers in the field would be hired and then they would leave as soon as the funding is over and even before they can enter the data into the Excel spreadsheets and then send it to us, they would be gone. And with the staff, the data would also be lost. So this was another huge limitation um, that we found with the existing monitoring system that we had. And then another problem that we faced was that um, the data would be reported and it would go all the way up to the national level and then they would send it to support offices and even to the global center, but we would not um, have the time to feed that information back to the CMAM programs and by the time we may be able to, uh, the, the program would already be done. So this was another big challenge that we faced and the whole uh, purpose of why we monitor our programs is so that we could improve the quality of our programs as it is still running and this was not being done. Um, another challenge that we faced was there would be a lot of um, requests from the global and regional level um, from donors and uh, other various partners for our data and we would not be able to address these requests on a timely manner and especially it's because most of our CMM staff are in the field as they should be but if they're in the field, as you know, there isn't a lot of internet um, connectivity, and so it'd be very difficult um, to even see the requests. Yeah, so these were some of the challenges and the limitations that we faced. And in 2009, World Vision began expanding our CMA programs very rapidly, and we saw an urgent need to address these needs and also to standardize our indicators across the partnerships so that we could compare our data for various countries. So in that same year, we hired uh, a consultant to be able to develop an online database for us. And by 2010, we launched our online database. And we piloted in Kenya and Niger. And yes, our CMAM database is available in French as well as English. And we also pilot in Ethiopia. Uh, during this whole process, we collected historical data from 10 countries, and this was both Excel spreadsheets and tally sheets. You can imagine how, how tedious this work was, and we tried to enter all this information onto our online database. Um, for some countries, it was successful, but for some countries, it wasn't, and we had to actually start um, entering the data from the date that they started uh, implementing the online database in their countries. So during this whole rollout and scale up, we developed a training material for a three day training. And the last day, we dedicated an entire day to just um, helping train the, the staff at the ADP, which is our program site level, in how to analyze the data themselves um, and how to apply that to their programs. So, so we were able to address that need um, through our trainings. And then we would also train our external consultants who we we commonly use um, to build up capacity for our CMEM programs, especially valid international consultants. And we partnered with them and we trained our, our external consultants in the CMEM database so that they could, um, when they're out in the field training our staff, they could add on three days to the activities and they could train the staff. And this helped us in cost savings in rolling out the database. 
We also conducted orientation sessions, online orientation sessions for our World Vision regional and support office staff so that they also know how to generate reports and graphs um, and be able to analyze the information for their own purposes, whether it's marketing or for um, donor requests. And so by 2011 to 2012, the database was uh, rolled out in 15 countries, and 14 countries are currently utilizing it. And you can see the list of countries there. And we currently have 330 users in total. So this is the financials. Um, by 2013, we spent $60,000, and this included the development of the database and also the rollout. And we started charging a user fee of $500 per CMAM program. Um, and that's starting this year. And this is to pay for uh, additional features that we will be adding and also to, to bring more ownership in um, and to allow the, the national office staffs um, to feel like they need to use the database because they're paying for it. So, yeah. The three main functionalities of our database are to input monthly tally sheets, to generate summary reports and graphs, automatically at a click of a button, and also to explore, ex export raw data into Microsoft Excel so that any further um, uh, statistical analysis could be done with the data for operational research projects. Um, the input of monthly tally sheets, we added a feature where it flags suspiciously inaccurate data. And so this was a very unique feature that helped to improve some of the accuracy of our data. So this is what the home page of our database looks like. You can see the three buttons um, the for the three main functionalities. And then you can also select the tabs on the top. So I'll go through the first, um, the input of tally sheets. So you could input data for all four components of CMEM, so OTP, SC, SFP, and SFP PLW data. Um, you can see that you can enter in the the admissions and then also the exits. Maybe I could use, yeah. And then the total admissions and total exits, and then the total number of children at the end of the month would all be calculated automatically if you en enter in the, the admission and the exit data. And then that total number of children at the end of the month would then be carried forward to the next month so that you don't have to re enter that information in. Uh, the second functionality is um, the generation, automatic generation of summary reports and graphs. So you would be able to generate summary reports for um, even up to the site level, which is the lowest level. Then you can aggregate the information um, to the division, district, regional, and country level. And then you could also generate reports for um, our support offices. So let's say World Vision Germany was interested in just the sites that they are funding, and they can select um, Burundi and then World Vision Germany, and they can see the, the summary reports for just the, the sites that they are funding within Burundi. So you would also put in from what month to what year um, you want to see the reports for, and then also click on the type. So whether you want an OTP summary report or SC summary report, you can select that as well. And this is what our summary report looks like in Excel. Um, so if you click Save, then it automatically goes into um, the Excel format. And then you can see here that uh, the cure, the discharge rates are automatically calculated, the percentages, and then the Sphere standards are right underneath it, as you can see. So our field staff would be able to see this and, and be able to analyze the data themselves and say, OK, we're doing a good job, or we're not meeting the Sphere standards, so what can we do differently? And then you can also see in the additional information the relapse, the number of relapses, and then the total number of males and female distribution. Uh, on the bottom, you can also see the various sheets in the Excel. So you can see the summary reports, but then if you click on the second sheet, this is the graph that you would see, and this is an SPMC graph. So you could see the percent um, trend over time for the various months, and the cure rates, the death rates, the default rates, the non-recovered rates. This is the second graph that you would see, and this is the total number of admissions, total exits, and then the total number of children that are in the SAM program. And then this is what you would see um, for the last 
graph. It's a pie chart for discharges and exits. And so you could compare these rates to the sphere standards easily. So exits also includes the referrals. That's the, dif the difference between discharge and exits. And then, of course, you can export the raw data into Excel. So now I'm going to go through a little bit of the results that we generated and uh, the analysis. And this was help done by a student from John Hopkins University. And our national offices are generating these reports and graphs to make programmatic decisions. And we have a poster at the back that you can check out later where um, Niger and Mali have done this. So this is an analysis that could be done, the total number of OTP admissions by country within the years 2006 to 2013. And this is the same thing for SFP admissions. And then this is OTP admissions disaggregated by the admission criteria. So by edema, weight for height, MUAC, and then others, including referrals from SCs. And then this is the OTP discharges by the discharge outcome. So this was for all 14 countries between 2006 to 2013 for World Vision. And the recovery rate was 89.7%, which is above sphere standards of 75%. And this is also for SFP discharges, and the cure rate was 92.2%. This is another analysis that we could do um, by comparing all the different countries to uh, the OTP sphere standards and then SFP once again. And this is an example of something that we could do for further analysis. Uh, we compare the correlation and the relationship between program size and outcomes. And you can see here, Ethiopia and Niger have a very big program size, and they also have the highest cure rates. And the, the four here that are below the sphere standards um, these countries are a lot smaller. And of course, there are other contextual factors that we need to consider, but the database allows us to see, okay, so what are the, some of the trends that we see in our countries, and we can do further analysis. So what have we learned in this whole process? We have improved the collection of data. Um, we have much more complete data, uh, data sets, we used to have a lot of missing reports, but our field staff know now that they need to enter this information online every month, and if they don't, then they get a phone call from their managers. So we have been improving in um, the collection of our data. We've been having a lot of time saving, especially with data entry and then the generation of the summary reports and also the graphs. It would actually take a lot of time for our field staff to generate graphs. Um, even knowing what to put on the x-axis versus the y-axis would take a lot of time. So having this all automated and for them to just focus on the analysis of the data has helped um, them tremendously and that was the feedback that we got. Also improving the accuracy of data, especially with the flagging of inaccurate um, data in the tally sheet input has improved um, the accuracy. And then the facilitation process of feeding back to the field level, this has also improved because the field staff now have access to the data themselves online and they can just um, go online and just check it out themselves. And the accessibility of the data, it's online, so our regional and support office staff can access it themselves as well. And improving program quality and project summaries help to prioritize the programs to provide extra support. The major feedback that we got from our field staff was that the database is user friendly and it's not very time consuming to input the data, yet it collects sufficient information and data. Additional features to come is um, one major one is the mobile health component. So World Vision has developed a uh, mobile app for CMAM. And so we are now able to track individual level child data. Um, and this allows us to automate the calculation of average length of stay and the average weight gain. And we have partnered with Demogi, um, also known for Comcare, and, which is their program name, and then Motec. Motec Suite, I don't know if you've heard of this, but if you are interested in partnering with us in piloting an app like this, um, it's very easy to contextualize to whatever program you are supporting, and so we can uh, work together to pilot this, and we are also planning to pilot in Afghanistan this year. Um, it's very interesting because you could even see the growth charts on the mobile phones if you do choose to use smartphones, but you could also choose to use just those basic Nokia phones. 
Uh, tracking of RUTF consumption is another feature that we want to add. Tracking essential medications for systematic treatments. Data validation to improve the validity of our CMAM data. Accounting for missing data. Um, so we would have automatic messaging embedded into our online reports and graphs to account for missing data. And tracking the number of staff that have been uh, trained in the various CMAM activities for CMAM capacity building indicators will also be uh, included in our uh, additional features. And last but not least, blanket supplementary feeding program indicators will also be added. So I just want to give special thanks to Tim Robertson from John Hopkins University and also to Sarah Carr, Colleen Emery, and Bridget Item for their support in this whole process and also this presentation. Thank you.